Hello everyone, welcome to the second lecture on uh, EC302 Digital Communications Module 5 and in the previous video I had covered about uh, the need for spread spectrum technique and the importance of P and pseudo noise sequences in spread spectrum. In this video uh, I will be covering the topic of synchronization, the need for synchronization and the types of synchronization techniques which uh, would cover carrier synchronization, symbol synchronization and frame synchronization. So let's quickly begin. In a digital communication system, data is transmitted from one location to another by mapping the sequences, by, that is by coding the sequences into symbols we modulate it, we use a proper uh, technique of modulation to transmit the signal depending on uh, the conditions, the environment and the power, transmitted power and the bandwidth availability. Now once the signal is transmitted, at the receiver, these symbols have to be recovered by some means. Yeah? So uh, as it is propagated, noise uh, may be added in the, uh, in the channel and the signal may be distorted. So we have to overcome such distortions and then detect the signals back in its original form. Now in the receiver, or at the receiver, we have uh, two different ways of uh, detection possible. One is coherent detection, and the other one is a non-coherent detection. Now, coherent detection is where all the possible sample functions are known to us. Whereas in non-coherent detection, one or more characteristics of the sample functions are to be estimated. Now, if you look at coherent uh, detection or a coherent receiver, a very important or a very commonly used technique is synchronization. That is the samples whichever we have received are uh, again processed to uh, get the reference signals for the correlator. That is the nothing but the carrier signal is being recreated to detect or uh, decode it correctly. We say synchronization based receivers are more advantageous over non-coherent ones in terms of noise performance and bandwidth efficiency. If we say asynchronous communication, what does it mean? When there is no synchronization of transmitter and receiver clocks, when we say synchronization, it is all about the transmitter and receiver clocks, the clock frequency. So when there is no synchronization of transmitter and receiver clocks, we call it as asynchronous transmission. This mode is used uh, when each element of uh, the transmission, I think I have not uh, made a mistake, I was saying about asynchronous communication when there is no synchronization of transmitter and receiver, we call it as asynchronous mode of communication. This mode is used when each element of the transmission should be treated independently. That is, uh, they are all, each symbol is independent of each other. They don't depend on the previous symbols or the uh, successive symbols. What about synchronous communication? Where there is a close synchronization of transmitter and receiver, we call such a mode of transmission as synchronous transmission. That is the complete block or the complete uh, symbols or the set of symbols which we have received is considered to be one single entity of transmission. So for asynchronous transmission uh, in the receiver, since they are not synchronous or since the clocks are not uh, synchronized, we will have to find out some other way or means to actually detect the signals correctly. When there is synchronization, it becomes easier for us because we know when uh, the carrier uh, carrier uh, frequencies or the carrier signals time periods starts and ends right so it's possible for us to actually detect it but whereas in asynchronous mode since they are not synchronized we need to find another alternative source to actually detect the single signals correctly what is the need for synchronization? If you look at the actual need for synchronization, 
There are several points uh, which make it clear why it is essential for the serial transfer of data, of digital data. The one major problem we would say is the sender and receiver clocks may not run synchronous. So And so the sampling instance, the instant at which we sample the signal will vary, will shift from the beginning of a signal. If suppose uh, we have to sing, uh, sample it at the beginning of the signal and then the signals or the uh, clocks are not synchronized, what happens is the samples may be taken in, at the uh, end of the signal, which is completely wrong and we don't get the uh, uh, symbols decoded correctly. So let's let's take an example to, uh, of some sequences of which is, which is transmitted and what happens at the receiver if they're not synchronized. Okay, so let's take an example of uh, or let's imagine a communication system with two uh, equipments where or where two equipments are being transmit uh, transmitting information and their clocks are there's a major difference in the speed of their system clocks. Let's say the receiver's clock is running uh, at around 12.5% uh, ahead of time. That is 12.5% ahead of time. The receiver is receiver clock is 12.5% ahead of the transmitter clock. In such a scenario, what happens? That means there is no synchronization between the transmitter and the receiver. Now we'll consider. We'll take an example. First one is a transmitted signal and the second one the, we, are, we are going to draw is the received signal. Now con considering this condition, that is the receiver clock is 12.5% times faster than the transmitter clock. So clock frequency is faster which means the time period is going to be smaller. Yeah. So here, over here, what happens is the signal, since they are not synchronized, what happens is they are coded this way. That is this time period or this time axis is not maintained. See, it exceeds and then you see over here, you get this kind of a signal which does not follow the time period for of the transmitted signal. So you get something of this, the amplitude is going to be the same. There's no, no much variation in the amplitude. Let's not take that into consideration now. We are considering talking about the time periods or detecting it in proper time intervals. Now, suppose this is the way you have de decoded it because of this condition. Now, what happens over here? If you read this out, over here it is 1, 0, it's 1, okay, 0, 0, 0. Um, let me draw it. This is 0. So in this time period, actually, there's a far lot of delay. Yeah. So over here, this is going to be 0 and this is going to be 1. If you check this out, our coded value is 0. What we transmitted was 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Right? What you have received is 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros and a 1. Okay, let's not take this value. The last bit is 1. So check out these two sequences. Is it same or is it different? You can see there is one extra bit, right? So though we have transmitted how many bits? 3, 4, 8 bits. In the receiver, we have decoded to be 9 bits due to this error or this rate of difference in their speeds of the clock of transmitter and receiver now whatever 8 uh, sent 8 bit is sent but in the receiver we are we have obtained 9 bits when we decoded it yeah this happens because it doesn't the receiver clock does not follow the time period of the transmitter clock so this is a problem of uh, if the transmitter receiver is not synchronized now if you consider the different types of synchronization how are they actually classified See, when coherent detection is used, we, we need to know both the frequency and the phase of the carrier. Only then can we detect it correctly, right? So the estimation of carrier phase and frequency is called carrier recovery or carrier synchronization. That is, if we are able to uh, correctly 
obtain the frequency and phase of the carrier or the method used to actually find the frequency and phase of the carrier is referred to as carrier synchronization. And uh, to perform again the second one, if we have to uh, perform demodulation in case of asynchronous mode, what happens? We, we don't have this carrier clock synchronized, right? So we need to find an alternative method. So that alternative method is to use, suppose we have some set of data. I need to transmit hello. Yeah. So I need to transmit hello. And what I do is, I'm using an asynchronous mode of transmission. What I do is, I actually insert a start bit and a stop bit. This is a start bit and this is a stop bit. The reason why I am inserting the start bit and the stop bit are for the receiver to know when, uh, since we don't know the time interval or uh, the rate at which uh, the, it is being modulated, we are not aware of the carrier at all. So we insert a start and a stop bit at the tr uh, transmission side so that the receiver can actually identify when does this actual data start and when is it going to end. So. One uh, major point you have to keep in mind is, see, if we don't use the same set of information for start and stop bits, the reason because we cannot, the receiver cannot identify if this is a stop bit or a start bit, if we use the same set of values. So whatever start value, value we use for start, it should be the opposite of what we use for stop. So both are different so that we can identify if it's a start bit or a stop bit. So this method is used for asynchronous mode of transmission. Next, uh, this type of uh, detection is referred to as symbol synchronization. And the third one we have is frame or chip synchronization. Frame synchronization is also called chip synchronization, where uh, in modern, generally we consider the modern communication system, modern digital communication systems, where we transmit the data in the form of frames or packets. Yeah? So since we transmit it in the form of packets or frames, we need to synchronize them. When is the start of a frame and when does it end? So this synchronization technique is referred to as frame synchronization or chip synchronization. So in so three types, carrier synchronization, where the clock frequency and phase are to be recovered. Second is a symbol synchronization, where you have to, we transmit bits to know where, when and where to sample the signal, signal. And third one is a frame synchronization. So let's quickly move on to the carrier. The first one, which is carrier synchronization. Carrier synchronization, we have two methods. One is mth power method. mth power loop. Okay. And the second one is Costa's loop. Costa's loop. Uh, maybe you are not aware of these names but when I start explaining you what these are you will feel that you have already covered it previously in a uh, few techniques of detection and transmission I think BPSK where you could not use a coherent detection we had gone for a non-coherent one and Costas also we had gone through PLL circuit and all that so so I am sure uh, you will be familiar with these concepts when I start explaining you the first concept is mth power loop this is uh, the block diagram for uh, carrier synchronization where you can see the receive signal is uh, raised to its mth power. If it is if m is 2 then it's called a squaring device. So it's raised to a power of m and then which is passed to a bandpass filter and here if you check this what is this all about. If you, you have a close look this is a mixer. You have a low pass filter and you have a VCO, voltage control oscillator. This is nothing but your phase locked loop, right? So uh, here, whatever signal is being received, it's raised to its mth power. And here we actually lock it to a particular carrier frequency. And then uh, if, since we have raised it to its mth power, we need to get back the signal. So what we do is we give it to a frequency divider, divide by m. Here you get the reference signal. This reference signal is used at the, as a carrier to detect, recover the original information. So this is a one, one, one of the methods of uh, carrier synchronization where mth power, 
this method is called mth power loop where its signal is raised to its mth power and then it is filtered off and it's given to a PLL where it, the phase is locked and then it's passed to a frequency divide where phase and the frequency is decided of the carrier. So the reference signal is used as a carrier signal. So this is one of the methods. This is the second method, Costa's loop. Costa's loop, uh, you, we, we can see that uh, the received signal is being split into two parts and each separately multiplied with uh, a carrier over here. This carrier signal is taken from this uh, output of the VCO signal multiplied with the carrier. So this carrier is one nine, minus 90, that is 90 degree out of phase compared to this carrier. And uh, the output is uh, here there is a phase determination or phase discrimination. The two signals, the difference in these two signals is identified, is given correspondingly a voltage is being supplied over here. So this is the second method, it's a Costa's loop for uh, carrier synchronization. I am, I am sure this figure as well is familiar to you, we have learnt it uh, in some of the detection methods already. Next uh, we move on to the to uh, sim next one, symbol synchronization. Symbol synchronization here, the symbol synchronization uh, technique, what happens is, the clock is being transmitted along with the data bearing signal in multiplex form and then at the receiver the clock is extracted by appropriate filtering of the modulated waveform. Now this it minimizes the time required for carrier or clock recovery because in the previous case the carrier was not uh, transmitted along with the uh, signal. It was extracted out from the res uh, received signal. So whereas in symbol synchronization what we do is we uh, send the carrier also along with the data signal. But here the negative or the drawback is a fraction of the transmitted power is all, it has to be allocated for transmitting the clock. We cannot use it, use the entire power for transmitting the data whereas a part of it has to be allocated to transmit uh, the clock. To explain uh, simple symbol synchronization, let me consider a few waveforms which will help you get a clear picture on this concept. Consider this waveform. We have this uh, bit stream given as 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 1. And this is the clock pulse. And uh, let's consider uh, we have used bipolar uh, encoding scheme. So here if you see, whenever there is uh, 1 and the clock goes high, you get the output as 1 and then 0. Here it goes 0. So and uh, whenever the clock goes high, it goes to 0 and it comes back. Sorry, it goes uh, to minus 1 and comes back to 0. Similar way, we can code this as. I hope it's clear. Whenever the clock goes high and the value is 0, it goes to minus 1 and comes back. It is returned to 0 form. So it's coming back to 0. And here again the clock is there and it's high. So it repeats this way. In a way it is negative and away it's positive. So this is how you get the coded signal. Now from this coded signal, this is a signal which is being transmitted, right? So from this signal, what we do is we perform some filtering technique and uh, we extract the clock pulse. That is, let's say uh, we have extracted the clock, clock pulse to be this way. So we have the clock pulses uh, being extracted this way. Yeah, so uh, how do you, uh, this this is being extracted or uh, from the received signal using some filtering techniques and all that, using the same time period. So you can see whenever it goes high or low, you get a clock pulse, right? So whenever it goes high or low, you get a clock pulse. So this is being extracted through different techniques of uh, filtering and all that. Now from this clock pulse, how do we recover the received, I mean, sorry, the bit stream, which is transmitted. So you can see over here, there's a clock pulse, which is started. And it going low over here it is from this actually we take this value so you get it this way something similar to the transmitted bit stream but it is little shifted because this is the time axis actually and so you have a gap over here this small gap yeah so it is we are receiving the signal but still due to uh, 
some disturbances caused in the channel we are getting a shift a little not too much still we can recover or get back the signal properly so this is the method of single symbol synchronization where you extract uh, the clock is being filtered out Fil the clock is also transmitted along with the, the signal so which is being filtered out and then from the clock we have obtained the bit stream so this method is called symbol synchronization the next one is frame synchronization frame synchronization and now as i told you in modern digital communication systems we always that tra uh, data transfer is done in the form of packets so for uh, that for transferring the data in the form of packets we also again we have to synchronize them right so we use some frames or bits at the start and end to actually uh, detect the start and end of the frame we call them uh, we call those start and end uh, bits as flags yeah so they are referred to as flags so you have a start flag and we have an end flag now these start and end flags are uh, assigned to both the ends so that the start flag indicates the start of a frame and end flag indicates the end of the frame now uh, this is how the receiver actually identifies the frame uh, or uh, actually detects and de demodulates or decodes the message being received so we need to ensure that uh, they are synchronized properly otherwise we it may tend to the loss of data and inefficient communication or transmission may take place so this is all about synchronization topic we have covered three types in detail and uh, and the need for synchronization has also been discussed i hope the video is clear to you thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video soon